Florida State and Texas A&M in the 16th kickoff classic on ABC Sports. The backfield, he's the quicker of the back ball, fumbled, rolling around on the ground, the nose jump all over it. And I would be surprised if they don't have it. Into it and rolled it out in Florida State, gets it. So the Seminoles fumble one away and now the 15. Good protection, ball down the middle. Pass is caught by Bugins. And it is a first down for the Aggies back in the 70s. It's a great one. Is Miner inside the five. Oh, and down quarter. Seminoles trying to take the lead. Miner up the middle. Touchdown. This is the kind of play that haunted the Seminoles for the white shirted Aggies. Run the ball up in the middle. Fumble, and it's recovered by Florida State. Picked up on the run, and the ball is going to be returned by Tommy Polly, a linebacker. In here with a long of 56, which was a Florida State record. Left footer, hammers it up, and good. And a 3.04 to go in the first quarter. Just knocked the air out of the Got it up high. Yard deep. Here comes Hall. the 42. Stewart with a play action gets it airborne. Got a man on the sidelines and it is a penalty flag. The ball is caught. The flag doesn't mean anything. The ball is caught. First down Texas A&M but this time Cole went up and got it. Oh, he mugged him. Oh, he did. <laughs> he did everything but hit him with a hammer. Yeah, it's, it's another first down pass and going deep. Seminoles led the nation in run deep. Hardeman goes in there. Joe Paterno is uh, not having a tough time selling his group. Wake is going to get it. Ball is loose. Aggies got it. There goes touchdown for Texas A&M. Jay Brooks. Christian Rodriguez, number two, hit Chris Winky right between the shoulder blades and knocked it loose. He's hit one from 33 yards early on in the ball game. This one is put down at the 17, 18, and it is a 28 yard. He needs to kill it. Oh, he did. He runs him back to the 45, back to the 42. And they almost got him back there, but now he's got three. And comes back to the 37. The clock's still not running. It must be that now malfunction. To the end zone. It's caught. Warwick, touchdown. Went around the defender, came back, the ball hit him on the numbers, he caught it. Kirk Parker now is out there in the receiving position. Pressure coming, pass is thrown, trying to come back inside. The ball skipped around and caught on the ricochet by Chris Cole. And Brandon throws this out there without really looking. It bounces off of one of the receivers back, comes back to it. <laughs> down on that carry inside the 17-yard line. Here comes the blitz. Mickey runs away from it. Holds it down, and fumble. Aggies may have it. They do. That's a good kick. Got a lot of hang time on it. Oh, there's the penalty flag, and uh, Webster almost got him. But he's got away again and runs it. That win with a 22-yard field goal try. He's two for two tonight. And now three for three. So that makes it a 23-14 ball game with three minutes and 26 seconds. Most of the polls starting the season. 23, Texas A&M, 14. Good football game. Both teams played well. And we thank you for joining us. Drive it, Lend right here. McNabb lost the starter. He's a sophomore. 
a big corner. Lewis into the he didn't play much his first three games. Harden off the play fake to Lewis. Roland looking deep again. Ball is caught. Hands on their feet on the third and six. Martin on the roll. Caught. Darryl Daniel went in motion. And McNabb hit, got it back. His second recovered fumble leaps over a defender and makes his way out. End up with that because he had his hands on his first. McNabb took it away. Here's Conrad with room to ramble. Rob Conrad. Middlebacker for the balls on a second and seven. And McNabb with the option pitch for McIntosh. McNabb throwing back oh. by the ball. And that brings third and 23. McNabb pulling up on the run. So we'll see how conservative they plan to be here late in the first half. Conrad. Conrad. The play is well blocked. Scott Kiernan with a good block here. Conrad shedding tacklers, fighting for extra yardage, and that's when you have to rivet that ball to your rip cages. Johnson's able to get it out right here. Is he down? Well, over the middle, caught by just outside the 10-yard line. Martin on the keeper will turn. He's at the five. He stumbles. He died. Tennessee in the eye. The give is two. Very often when you try gadget plays, this is a fake reverse. What happens on the gadget plays is you don't get enough work. The protection's not good here. The third wide out. Here it is again. They move after the audible was called. Trying to give them a bad play. It's picked up. Catch Johnson. Kevin Johnson. Lewis has it knocked away, but Tennessee jumps on. Back down to one. Got the snap in time. McNabb will keep Conrad out in front for the block. Brings it to a pitch for McIntosh. Much more has been on the young quarterback's shoulders. And he is flushed out, going to keep. And Team Martin at midfield. Huge. Fade the other side for Price. Did he hang on yet? On the one, McIntosh. Little seam up the middle for Kyle McIntosh, who might go. The kicker hole is back. Play action steps up to keep. Popped it up. It's coming. McNabb somehow spins away. How'd he do that? Going deep for Daniel. Wilson cannot believe it. He is clean on the blitz. This is where you destroy quarterbacks, not this guy. He shakes him off. Al cannot believe it. If you could have seen the dejection. In his... They blitz young Martin again. This time it's... Draw play for Lewis. Jamal with a for the win. And it is good. Tennessee wins it. For the Tennessee team with a young quarterback, the Syracuse team came back again and again from mistakes. The Picks it up and incomplete. Almost intercepted. And the deflection picks. 
picked off by James. This one will be 43 yards from the left hash mark. It is short. No good. Didn't too often, yeah. First down, Michigan. Three all tied. Wolverines at their own 42. Play action by Brady. He's going long this time for Marcus Knight. It is intercepted by Devron Harper. What a play. Instead of Craig Baker, this one from 21 yards. Dealey pounds it through and... The action, he fades the throw. Scramble, wide open. It's Rakai Nelson, and Nelson has a first down. Yard field goal attempt then for Jim Sanson to tie the game out of Hunter Smith's hole. The kick, yeah. low, but good. A knuckleball. Plays if they choose to hand the ball to Kerber. Brady rejected, and he got oh. that touchdown. Not a signal he did. I thought they had rejected him. Well, you, you be the judge. Yep. Now, all the ball has to do is go over the first part of that white line. It doesn't have to get into the end zone. And it doesn't have to completely pass no. it. The nose of the football touches that line. Just touch. Thank you, Jim. Here are the first half statistics. And Michigan dominating in first down 16 to 4 and totaled yard. Just a couple of big plays, Pat Hayden, for the Irish. Yeah, just had that one long run by Denson, 57 yards on their opening play and one long pass. Good fullback. And he's going to run it this time on. Jackson on third. They call it three now. Quick toss. Complete. Jackson. 40. Breaks a tackle. 30. Out of bounds at the Michigan. 20. It's third down and two. Big to the fullback. Jackson keeps. And Michigan right there to drag him down short of the first. Very low kick. Little. This one's for 32 yards. Good snap. Good hold. And the kick is through. So 13 to 9. Michigan about to own the football for the first time in the second half. Hunter Smith to kick it off. Spins it straight down the middle. Clarence Williams. 15, 20. That's a seam. 30. was really concerned about the kicking game coming into its opening game. Once again, a factor. 38 run of uh, Brock Williams, a freshman. Brock Williams, a freshman quarterback. He's the one who owns the ball at the Wolverine 34. Denson on the toss. Gets a block. 30. And down at the 20. Ends. One wide receiver, Bobby Brown, out to the left. Jackson keeps it. Yeah. At the four-yard line, after the fumble by Michigan on the kickoff return. The give, fake to Denson, the throw wide open, touchdown! Dan O'Leary! Kinds of plays like this. Here's Dan O'Leary. Watch everybody come up here, and Dan O'Leary, the tight end. Everybody's defending the option in the power play because they've run it so successfully in this drive. He just blocks and blocks. It takes a two-count uh, release and wild, wonderful series for the fighting out. Watch Denson sell it, though. He's yeah, so right. beautiful. And nice touch that time by Jerry Jackson. And those are tough passes, aren't All they, boy. when your man's wide open? It, it really is. It really is. That's freshman Dave Terrell of blistering speed. Brought the backfield. There's Weaver. He, he gets uh, the runner Jackson off balance. He was trying to shift the ball. Bobbles it. Gilbo knocks him off. And Iron slides in for the recovery at the Michigan 35. So five minutes left in the third. Notre Dame with another chance. Jackson stumbling as he tries to get out of the pocket. Wide open. That's a touchdown. Notre Dame with Ty Nelson. Jackson and here is Nelson in the slot and 
Dick, I know you have high standards for your oh my's, but I want to tell you, this is a pretty good one. This is a pretty good Great play action fake. It looked like Jarius Jackson was going to stumble and fall for a moment, but he found his presence to get his hand down and gain his balance, find the ball to Nelson downfield. There had to be a blown coverage. Oh, look at this. Yeah, isn't that great? But that is what some of the pressure, the option play, can can give you uh, to do, do to a defense. It can confuse your coverage from time to time. In the third quarter, Michigan trails by 10. Brady goes up top. It's the freshman Terrell in motion. And he goes short side. No, it's a fake. And then Brady can't get rid of it. Down he goes at the touchdown. Back to the 45. Notre Dame has it at the 47. Another big play by the Irish. A great middle linebacker play and great special teams play by Jimmy Friday. Friday, number 13, it was down down to block low, and Notre Dame takes over here midfield. This is a fullback, number 45. Leading 23-13. Inside again, good speed. And good speed staggers forward to the third. The other fullback, Jamie Spencer, recovered. Benson gets out of the crowd. How did he extricate himself? And he has a first down. The key fumbles, two touchdown passes by Jarius Jackson. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. First and 10, just outside the Michigan 15 yard line. Johnson and David Gibbons, a freshman 14 in the game. Give inside, off the option, and scribbling is Jamie. Third and one, Denson. Hill, Florida, gives Notre Dame first and goal at the eight. Michigan trailing 30 to 13. 53 yards after the block field goal. Audrey Denson cashes it in for Notre Dame. A Notre Dame touchdown. Chance for a men. short this one has enough length it is no good. goal at the 29 there's four missed field goals we forgot to add the blocked field goal as well for Michigan. To the four. To the much time as he can third down and six under six minutes remaining and jackson's going to carry himself breaking tackles there's that 220 pounds of power they had a fullback Autry denson the tailback Mike McNair in motion. Denson. Oh, what an effort. Well, first and goal, Michigan, with Drew Henson at the controls, looking for his first touchdown. He's got it to the tight end, Jeremy Tooman. That arch is very real on this early Saturday in September. Ohio State kicks off the season against the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Welcome everyone to Morgantown and the start of another season of NASDAQ College Football here on CBS Sports. Tremendous scene here tonight in Morgantown. This game's been sold out for months and here come the Mountaineers. Ranked number 11 in the preseason polls led by veteran coach Don Nealon. Virginia 7 and 5 a year ago they went to the car quest ball and now entering the field the number one team in the nation 
the Ohio State University Buckeyes. its season on the road for the first time in 23 years. And John Cooper, their coach, says this is the toughest opener for OSU in his 11 years in Columbus. Great to have you with us. The opening kickoff from Morgantown. A 47-yard try from the left hash mark. And it is good. Well, many believe Third and four, the Buckeyes. First possession. Jermaine on the run, man. Open. First down, Buckeyes. 50% of his field goals last year. This is a 36-yard try. And his kick is good. The each team marches into enemy territory. And each drive. Germany number 80 has been playing wide out in his absence. Up the middle, a big hole. Michael Wiley. The, the first three times he touched the ball, he scored touchdowns at Ohio State. And here he goes again, looking for the end zone. Touchdown! <laughs> Bulger with a lot of time. Throws over the middle, caught, juggled, dropped. I'm not sure that was ever intended. Second and five. Play action fake by Joe Germain. He's going very deep. Looking for Dean Miller, and it is caught. A terrific catch by Miller. Concentration right there by D. Miller. That's excellent concentration on the ball. For sure. And now Germain to the end zone. Touchdown, D. Miller. Highly touted coming out of high school in Springfield, Ohio. Stoltz kicks off, and it's a short one. Caught on the run by Jerry Porter. And he's banged down at the 31-yard line. They're diving on the pilots. If the ball came out, the Buckeyes say they have it. And they do. And a tough angle from 36 yards. No problem for Stoltz. His second field goal in Morgantown. Draw for Zeroen. He's going to run for a touchdown, perhaps. 30 times every game. He has one reception. Bulger throws. Man open! Pat Green down to the four-yard line. First time they've thrown the green and get the game. And Zeroen stays in the block. Bulger. Would be wise to throw it away or find somebody throws it into traffic and it is caught a touchdown what a play by sean foreman how much the distractions prior to the start of the season academically affected andy katzenmoyer but he's a great linebacker and he'll have plenty of tackles as this year unfolds Reggie Germany lost the football. And it could have been recovered by West Virginia. They tried to advance it. Open for a big time team. They've been excellent tonight. Jermaine has time again and throws. Caught by David Boston. And he spins away from the tackler. And Boston is second down and three. Joe Montgomery. They take to him. They throw to the end zone. Touchdown, Boston. Not as good a kick. Wobbly kick. Juggled. It's free. And it is still free. And Ohio. The problem over the years, obviously, has been the results against Michigan and in the bowl game. Other than that, you can't argue. Here's another free ball. And another Follow view. Here's the holder. And that one is hooked a bit, and it's no good. Even his critics would have to say that. Turning the corner and going in for the touchdown is Jonathan Wells. So the true freshman in his first collegiate game has a touchdown. New schedule after the play. First down for Bulger. He has a man open. It's David Saunders. To your team all year long. They run the fade. And it is caught for a touchdown. 
Sean Foreman on the receiving end, and he and Bulger have that play down. Play action fake. They probably weren't fake. Out by that fake. And it is intercepted. First of the night. And it was picked off by David Mitchell, the sophomore from Westerville, Ohio, in his first career interception. An impressive start for the season for number one Ohio State as they come into a very difficult stadium in which to beat the home team. And they beat number 11 West Virginia convincingly 34-17 in the final. Number one Ohio State has defeated West Virginia 34-17. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. Shotgun. McNown. Here comes the rush. Picked up beautifully. Over the middle. Caught. That's Freddie Mitchell. The 5'11 freshman from Florida. Catches five touchdowns all in the first half. Here's the reverse. Mitchell will throw. Going deep. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Touchdown UCLA. Brian Poli Dixon. 34 yards from Freddie Mitchell. Freddie Mitchell is the guy I was talking about. Comes in, throws a pass. What a play by UCLA. What a Freddie Mitchell's going to get the ball, and you're going to see that he's got his glove on on this play, which is extremely hard to throw the football with the glove on, but he throws a pretty spiral. Brian Pulley Dixon did a great job downfield to separate the line. Quick drop. Wants Farmer. One on one on the outside. Lost it up for Danny. He's got it. Down to the 18. Rising in the setbacks. Jermaine up the middle. Jermaine Lewis. He's in. Touchdown, UCLA. The numbers were way down last year against the Bruins. Walton again, wide open. Caught. Williams has a chance. Ricky Williams in Bruin territory and out of the 31 yard. This was a clutch kicker for Texas. 39 yarder on the way and good. So Texas is on the board. This is for UCLA. Stockton, Freddie Mitchell. The freshman inside the five, up the middle. Freddie Mitchell breaks out to the 35 to the 40 yard line. Long count for Cade. A reverse again. Freddie Mitchell, this time he's going to run with it. Freddie Mitchell inside the 30. He could score. Freddie Mitchell down to the 10, knocked out of bounds. Out the Touchdown, UCLA. German. Big now second and eight. Setting up a screen pass. Complete to Brown. He's got blockers. He's got room. 50, 45, 40. Brown at the 30. He's all the way down to the 21 yard line. So, the capper on that great recruiting class. Wide open. Caught Danny Farmer spins. Danny Farmer. Touchdown, UCLA. Great play. Nick now will throw. Going end zone. Paulie Dixon. Touchdown, UCLA. Stoop, the quarterback. Out of shotgun. Over the middle. That is McCarity, and he's got some room to roam. To Ricky Williams. This is the fullback, Ricky Brown, touchdown, Texas. 1,500 yards coming into this game. Williams again, fumble. UCLA. First turnover of the season. After that fumble to gain some confidence, Deshaun again. Going to the outside, Deshaun Foster. Is he in? Touchdown, UCLA. Cade McNabb will roll. It's the blind roll and over the middle. Intercepted. Quint Jammer stepped in front of the Williams. You can bet the farm on it. Ricky looking close. Touchdown, Texas. Either on the last play or the play before when he was crunched by the Bruins. Williams, 20. Ricky inside the 10. They're going to bite into that lead. Ricky Williams should score here. And does. Touchdown, Texas. Ricky Farmer has fumbled in this half, scored a touchdown earlier in the game. McNown under pressure, rolling, looking, throwing. Got a man. Caught. Freddie Mitchell. Touchdown, UCLA. 79 big yards. Inside the 10, will be first and goal. Williams, stop, then go, then score. Touchdown, Longhorn.
Longhorns. Number three, four, Ricky Williams. Final, 49-31. Mike and I back to say goodbye. Wrap things up on the Rose Bowl. dynasty of the 90s may be in new hands, but they appear to be as reliable as ever. Kevin Owens trying to take the lead. Minor up the middle. For the Seminole Chief, who has captured the nation's spotlight and dominated the ACC, only perfection is acceptable. Among the challengers, though, a hungry wolf pack who last year refused to die as Torrey Holt pierced the Knowles for a league record five touchdown catches. And it was fun. Let's see if I can do that again. Catch me next on ABC. From Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina, the number two team in the nation in action today as the Seminoles of Florida State take a state record. First down, Winky, play action. Plenty of time, and he's got Warwick wide open over the middle of the football field. Can you believe this on the first play from scrimmage? Warwick to the end zone. Let me say it again. You don't want to give a knockout punch with the first shot. I believe you're right, right for a 44-yard <laughs> field goal. Here would. And this one is well to the right. And no good. An incomplete pass on the first play. Winky going deep. He's got Cole, the other speedster. Huge gain inside the 20. Finally brought down at the 11-yard line. Harrison, third and four. Play action again for Winky in plenty of time. Thrown and picked off. Picked off by the Wolfpack. Lloyd Harrison, the junior out of Floral Park, New York, comes up with the biggest play of the game so far for the pack. Carolina in for Torrey Holt. He gets a rest right now. Here's Chris Coleman going up for it. Who came down with it? He got it. That's a catch. Coleman comes down with it between two. And that was shotgun. And Todd completes it to Eric Lee. Can he get to the end zone? Yes. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Good punt. Hope going to come up to the 32. Doesn't call for the first catch, and a flag is thrown. Still on his feet is Torrey Hope. Going to cut it back. Hope inside the 20. To the corner of the end zone, he's going to score. He's phenomenal, and I think the penalty is against Florida State for being in the two-yard circle. They didn't give him the mark. That's a solid program. Lanky. Quick drop, this one's picked off at the 32. Rodney Red and the second pick of the afternoon for the inside of the five this time. What a difference this has made. A beauty back to the 38. Feaster finds a hold up. Dee Feaster cutting it back with a big return. Still on his feet and now tackled at the 23 yard line. Very well. Plenty of time over the middle. Intercepted. Intercepted. Intercepted in the end zone by number nine, Jason Perry. Here comes Holt in motion. Got to watch him at all times. Going to throw to the tight end up. Devon Smith for the big game. To the 15-yard line. Knocked out by Sean McCoy. These two teams have matched up. Like NC State has outscored him. This one underthrown going to be picked off. Edwards bringing it back. Out across the 40. Still on his feet in now. Mario Edwards brings it back all the way to the 32-yard line. And that was exactly Fairly good, but it is good. Brought it in right inside the right upright. believe this no momentum certainly didn't switch coming out of the locker room 16 to 7 and maybe the biggest upset of the year brewing in Raleigh Got wide open and this one's picked off Roy to Harrison for the interception still on his feet Tiptoeing up the near sideline and knocked out of bounds at the 25 yard line of the Seminoles by Ross Brennan 
could be in trouble. There goes Torrey Holt again in motion. Barnett looking for him. He's got him open. Goes behind him. What a catch by Holt. Unbelievable. What a catch by Torrey Holt. And he'll place it down at the 18-yard line. 28-yard field goal attempt for Earwood. Wide to the right. Nice snap for Cottrell, and he gets it underway. Marcel Huff just drilled as he tried to feel the ball. Inside the three-yard line. There's the drive so far. Through the hands of Warwick, and this one picked off. NC State with the fifth interception of the game. Anthony Cason, the redshirt freshman out of Indian, the quickness east and west. Well, now they've got the great tackles up the middle. Barnett, there's Holt out there, makes the catch. Holt, Holt to the score. Corey Holt to the end zone. 63 yards, there are no flags on the 17. Holt in motion to the far side. Barnett to throw back to the tight end, Smith, he gets there. 24 to 7 Wolfpack. Receiver set for the nose out of the shotgun. Winking, plenty of time going deep on the far sideline. Intercepted by the Wolfpack. Anthony Cason again picked it off after it was tipped. What went wrong today? Yeah, there's a Wolfpack club enjoying what may be the biggest win in the program's history. They've had some great ones and some great players. But they just upset the number two team in the nation, Bobby Bowden. And as Bowden comes over to have a word and congratulate Mike O'Kane, the clock has stopped. And I'm not sure they could get these folks off the field if they wanted to. State troopers are trying to help Mike O'Kane. He's got that bad leg. He said, hey, leave me alone. Just let me walk slowly here. NC State at 2-0, and oh, Florida State 1-1. One and one. The Wolfpack, as big a win as they've had, perhaps, in the history of their program, is upset number two. For Tim Brandt, I'm Terry Gannon. Hope you enjoyed watching Torrey Holt go deep against the Knowles. Remember, Michigan State, Notre Dame tonight. From the campus of Michigan State University, the Spartans host the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to a college football series that dates back to 1897, back when Michigan State was known as Michigan Agricultural College. And it's a great opportunity to beat Notre Dame and make everybody forget the slow start. As they walk into the center of the field for the flip of the coin, let me tell you that it is a hot, muggy night. The temperature is 81 degrees as we get ready to kick it off. Took it in. Burt has all day. Now goes to the corner. Touchdown. Gary Scott. Caught it in front of Ty Good. First and goal from the three. Give it to Irvin Cedric going for the corner. And he's in there. He gets 
once you spread out like that, he's got you. The extra point try by Edinger. Good. 21 to 3 ball game. Michigan State leads it, and uh, the Spartans have the ball at their worst starting point so far in the game on their own 14 yard line. Oh, let's see if they're careful with it. Let's see whether or not the Irish go after him. Burke rolls it out, has a little time, wants to go deep. Burris is out there, and Burris has got it, and he's on his way. He is in there. Touchdown. Touchdown, the point is good, and a bolt of lightning has furrowed the brow of the entire Irish sideline. 28 to 3. Michigan State. Well, it looks like Nick Saban has really found himself a quarterback tonight. is having the night of his life. Seven of eight, 181 yards, three touchdowns, and we've got six minutes and 47 seconds to play in the first half. Edinger's extra point is good. Pressure coming, gets his pass later. Nobody touched him as he loped in for six. It's a point. He is hooked for good. And it's 42 to 3, Michigan State over Notre Dame. State Buckeyes are ranked number one in the early polls, and it may be this is the most talented and deepest football team in 1998. There are All-Americans on both sides of the ball. A quarterback named Jones from Missouri leads the challenge today. This a team capable of exceptional effort. On this third week of September, a postcard day, part of the time, but now there is the threat of thunderstorms just beyond the horizon. But whatever may happen, we've hunkered down by the Olin Tanger for a football game matching the Missouri Tigers and the Ohio State. They're both very, very good. Jermaine's pass thrown right on the numbers. Can't throw it any better than that to David Boston. It's Reggie Germany and uh, Kenyon Rambo coming at the wide receiver positions now. Fresh leg, the other folks getting the breather. Michael Wiley, he scores. Matt Keller through the block. Second and five. Corby Jones throwing. Sideline, got a man good. Main stays with the air game. Goes deep with it for Boston, who's out there. And first down, Buckeyes at the 39-38 yard line. Did they call it a fumble? It dead. It's a fumble. 
They're calling it fumble. And for the strip, he's got control of the football. That's a catch, a fumble, a turnover. Pete? And the... Jones, backside pressure coming, fields it, gets away from it, takes off. Got a lot of room. And he's inside. The... Jones makes some weight. He pulls it down and takes off. Rudzinski's after and gets past him. Dives, touchdown, Missouri. Kareem is now in a 7-7 ball game. Jermaine and Stavani bounces outside. Michael could be gone. They finally track him down. Cool. That turn turned. There's a big hole in the ground. <laughs> I'm hanging and short at the 10 yard line. It's Randy Potter. Oh, it's becoming quite a story. We may see him before the day's over. Here goes Jermaine. And oh, the ball comes out. It's picked up by Missouri. And down the sideline goes number five, Carlos Posey, for a touchdown. Knocked it loose from Joe Germain. Again. And he fixes it to Montgomery. And Montgomery. He got it down the middle. So now you want any big plays against us. Michael Wiley over the left side. Big hole. Gets a block. And down inside the Missouri 30 trail by a point. This is Montgomery. Look at that freshman fullback throw a block. Touchdown. <laughs> Jermaine will throw. Pass is caught by Boston. He's in there. 21 to 14. Ohio State, Missouri. Corby Jones got a big hole in the middle and picks up a first down. Ball comes out again and penalty flags all over the place. Referee Jim Kimmerling says it is Ohio State ball. But let's see about the flag. They signaled Ohio State ball. Face mask against the Buckeye. So it doesn't matter if the ball was out or not. Here's a look at it. Damon Moore, number 13, right there is a face mask. That's a good call. Corby Jones has it. Throws the football. Ohio State's got it. Looked like Joe Brown might have been the man, but it, it's first down for the Buckeyes. And Jermaine back from the 42. Runs away from the pressure. Now lets it go. And got his man. And it's fumbled by Lumpkin. And the Buckeyes return the ball to you anymore today. Michael Wiley. Tyson Walter and John Lumpkin for him 24 carries 200 and, and he's got it number 43 he's got a hole and touchdown you get to this point in the ball game three fits as uh, we finish the game with a final score of Ohio State 35 and Missouri 14. Hard by the banks of the Tennessee River is 107,000 seat Neyland Stadium, home of the Tennessee Volunteers. And a festive atmosphere has surrounded the stadium all day as Vols fans gear up for their annual showdown with the Florida Gators. The Tennessee players made their traditional walk across campus and arrived confident that this will be the year they end their five game losing streak against the Gators. It's number two, Florida, and number six, Tennessee.
Travis McGriff waiting for the punt. Virtually no breeze in the stadium. A very warm night here in Knoxville. McGriff from his own 34. Has some running room. Travis McGriff taken down at the field. Walker. And a throw caught by Travis Taylor. And he's very close to a first down at the 25 yard line. One, Palmer back in at quarterback. And Jackson lunges ahead for the first down. Managed to bounce off the hit of Dion Gray oh, this season. Three receivers out to the left. Jackson went out in the pass pattern. A low throw by Johnson, handled by Travis Taylor. And he's out of bounds. Jesse Palmer, the quarterback. On second and long, he throws into the flat. And struggling for the pylon was Terry Jackson, but they're going to spot him down by contact back near the three-yard line. Quarterback moving up and down the line to help his mates hear the signals. Jackson to the goal line. Lost the football! Raynog Thompson recovers in the end zone for Tennessee. Team margin. Martin with the deep drop and a lot of time going deep into double coverage and it is intercepted. Picked off by Tico Brown. Jesse Palmer faked the handoff, throws wide open. Robert Gillespie, the true freshman, inside the five and down near the two. 37. Doug Johnson back at quarterback. Empty backfield. To the end zone and incomplete off the fingertips of Travis Taylor. Extra point for Collins Cooper. Out of the hold of Billy Young. The kick is. And he hands the ball to Bryce and it rips through. He may go. Touchdown, Tennessee. Third and long. And he has a first down to Travis Taylor. He lost the football. And it has been recovered by Tennessee. Third down. Johnson lost the football. Al Wilson knocked it out. Tennessee ball. The snapper on the left hash mark. And he is good. Jeff Palmer, the quarterback, on third and 13. He throws, caught this time by McGriff for a first down. Out to the 48 yard line. Loss of 12 on that play. Third and 22. Doug Johnson has a man wide open. First down. He surely the answer to the athletic trivia question. On first and 15, the ball down the middle and incomplete. They're going to rule that a catch, and then the ball came out after he hit the ground. Six seconds left in the half. Tennessee by a touchdown. Florida threatening. Palmer to the end zone in traffic. Touchdown! Travis Taylor just inside the end zone. Well, you talk about a big-time play by Florida. For Tennessee at the Florida 29. T. Martin lofts it up, looking for Peerless Price. Lots of contact. Touchdown! <laughs> Jesse Palmer out of the shotgun, under pressure. Lofts it up for McGriff, and he has it! Travis McGriff down the sideline. Touchdown! Johnson is the quarterback on this play. Has Travis McGriff. Fumble! Still loose. Tennessee ball at the 36-yard line. Palmer, quarterback from midfield. A lot of time. Deep down the middle. Man open. Intercepted! The ball underthrown, and Deion Grant picked it off. 
Looked like a one-handed catch over the middle. Former football, I think. He's raised on fundamentals, conservative offense, conservative defense, in, in, in terms of field position, not in the toss and elected to go on defense. Steve Curry wants to know what he has to do when he gets the ball. The overtime in a moment. The Florida 25. Rules are the same. You can't pick up first downs by picking up 10 yards. Martin drops back, looking toward the end zone, throwing toward the end zone too long in a double coverage, looking for Cedric Wilson. And that feeling undoubtedly being experienced by his veteran players who have been through the losses to Florida in the past. Martin again, again going for the end zone, and it is batted away by Doc Pollard. Peerless Price, they have a more proven field goal kicker in Jeff Hall, one of the best in the nation. Florida's kicking situation, very uncertain. Martin scrambles, flagged down, looked like there was holding in the middle of that offensive line. Oh. Martin, Martin went. Martin runs, he's in field goal range. He's back to the 24-yard line. Good job by T. Martin saving the day there. They did run inside routes. They tried to put some receivers. To give Tennessee the lead in overtime. Out of the hold of Benson Scott. That kick is right down the middle. And what a bitter bat. Under pressure. He dumps it off. Caught. Gain of four. Alone back. They hand it off to Travis Taylor. And he is out of bounds at the 15. If he reached the 15, it's a first down. Cover those two guys. Second and 10. A blitz up the middle. The pass incomplete. Al Wilson having a monster night for Tennessee. Put the hit on Palmer. The quarterback on third and 10. Four wide receivers spread the field. Johnson toward the goal line incomplete. He threw short of Travis Taylor. Burt, who converted earlier, the only attempt of the season by Florida. From 32 yards, that kick is no good! Tennessee wins! McDonough saying so long from jubilant Knoxville, Tennessee, where long last the Volunteers have defeated the Florida Gators. The score, 20 to 17 in overtime. Tomorrow, the NFL on CBS continues with doubleheader action. It all starts at noon Eastern with the NFL today. This has been a presentation. Both teams are ranked in the top 10 in, or the top 20, pardon me, in both polls. Florida State 10th in the AP and USC off to a 3-0 start, ranked 18th in the Associated Press with a victory 40-20 last week against Oregon State. High snap and a low kick. And a bounce at about the 45-yard line. Did it touch a Trojan and did the Seminoles recover? The answer is yes. This in the open field, as you saw there. Moved it up to the 29. Van Rathorst will pass for the first time. Ball still in the air. And it is intercepted by Florida State. Still on his feet is Derek Gibson moving around outside to the 30-yard line. A first down and 18. Van Rathorst. Pressure from Stevens. Throws it up for grabs. Intercepted by Florida State's Dexter Jackson. Nearly thrown right into the hand. To make a few people miss. Wanky now, short drop. Warwick is open. Makes a great move. Warwick now cutting back at the 45. Inside the 40. Through the middle of the football field and finally hauled down by Ken Hassler. Attempt a 37-yard field goal to try to get the first points of the afternoon by either team. Outson handles the snap. The hold. The kick is up and it is good. 
A 37-yard field goal for Sebastian Janikowski oh, line. The reverse. R.J. Soward at the 50 into Florida State territory and forced out at the 36. Out of the hole to Bastianelli. The kick is up and it is good. So a career long motion to the near side. Play action. Wayne fires it up. Time in pattern. And the catch is made. High formation setup. The pitch to Miner around the outside. And he may not have got it. Chris. The pitch to Cheney. Cheney with the lead blocker. Tucks it in. Touchdown, Seminoles. What a good lead block on the play that anchors Jeff Cheney into the end zone for the third time. Wink looking, has Warwick wide open. He scoots away from the tackler. Still on his feet and all the way down. Lots of time, looking end zone. Well, a touchdown, Florida State! Get separation, great delivery by Day indeed for the USC offense. They've got the young freshman in it, quarterback for a second series, and a big run broken. That'll help. Moving down the field at the 30-yard line, down to the 20, and finally hauled down. Frank Strong, a freshman, second and 11. Pressure, football on the turf, and Florida State has it. The Seminoles have recovered. Long way to go to try to establish a drive here. Strong's going to get the carry. That's a good lead block. Oh, football on the turf. Who has it? Corey Simon and FSU. Yes, indeed. Should be a chip shot for Janikowski. His kick is up, and it is good. The Florida State leads again by 13 yards. Standing here. Wanky this time, good protection. Steps up in the pocket. Now looking downfield and completes it to Pete. They're going to be coming again. Here they come. Football's loose on the turf. It'll go as an incomplete pass, but right up the middle comes the pressure, but then Bryant comes from the outside, number 40, and actually calls it. Winky looking end zone, looking for Dugans, has him. Touchdown, Florida State. What a nifty move by Ron Dugans to beat Antoine. Strong side to the weak side this year. Warwick has it at the 27 yard line. Warwick on his feet. Warwick moves around the outside. He's got a little bit of room. Jukes it back. Now inside the 40. And finally, he will be brought really down. Showing good progress on Florida State's offensive side of the ball. Fumble. On the ground, who has it? Could it be a fifth turnover? Jerry Johnson in the 93 yards in the air. And under 200 yards of total offense as Florida State has defeated the Trojans of USC by a final score of 30 to 10. Got to be very impressed with Florida State's effort, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Chris Winky continuing to improve, not making some mistakes. And the dope dominance continues. 36 games unbeaten here at home. We're back with more in a moment. It's been 12 years since Georgia had beaten a top 10 team on the road, but that streak came to an end on October the 3rd, 1998, when the Bulldogs visited Baton Rouge to take on six-ranked LSU. The Dogs' offense wasted little time taking control of the game, taking the opening kickoff and marching for the game's first score. Freshman Quincy Carter tied a Georgia record by completing his first 15 passes treating the ESPN national television audience to a showcase of his talents. He led an 80-yard march for a touchdown on the dog's second possession. Carter, we run a, try to run a trap. He fakes it. He's back scrambling. Carter's coming out to the right. He's going to throw to a receiver back, complete on their 25 and out of bounds. That was Michael Greer. Carter takes it. Dumps a pass on a slant inside to Tony Small, who breaks a couple of tackles and fights to the two-yard line. LSU in an eight-man front. Toss sweep to Alandis Gary. Got a block. Cuts in. Touchdown. With the score tied at 14, Carter showed that he was as capable as a receiver as he is a quarterback. Carter underneath. Toss sweep to pass. 
who throws a pass back wide open to Quincy Carter on the 40, the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20, and out of bounds around the 13. Oh, oh, oh. That drive resulted in yet another Bulldog touchdown that gave Georgia a 21 to 14 lead. The score was tied at the half thanks to a miracle LSU touchdown, but Carter would help give the dogs a lead they wouldn't relinquish midway through the third quarter. LSU in a 4-3 snap back. Quincy got a block behind him, looking, looking. Now he threw it a mile. A leaping catch, Tony Small. Touchdown in the back of the end zone. That's his fourth or fifth tonight. Outstanding catch. Carter completed 28 of 35 passes for 354 yards and two touchdowns, while Champ Bailey would play 96 plays and finish with 195 yards of total offense. Bulldogs upset LSU 28-27 and that week would take the Tigers' place in the nation's top 10. This is the third consecutive year. These two teams have come to the Big Ten Conference opener undefeated and ranked in college football's top 10. Like some of the stuff. Well, the Nitties are having a good go. Out of the shotgun, Jermaine has time. His pass is away. His man is wide open. David Boston. Around the section, too. Third down and six. Jermaine's pass is away. Down the middle. The light rain. It's not going to help him. And it continues the light rain. Oh, that's a high snap. And they block it. And it's picked up of the Nittany Lions. King has it. And this would like pay-per-view. See what they've got. Back goes Thompson to throw. The pass is caught this time. He's a quarterback. It's a 42-yard field goal try for the lead. And he got it. And a penalty flag. Hold it. Hold it. Getting into the kicker. Defense. Now, Penn State goes to the lead. Three to nothing on a 42-yard field goal. Today. Jermaine back. Case. Now he's got room. He's got to have the first down. The pursuit is from LeVar Arrington. He's got a in there. Thompson back. Gets the pressure. Ball comes out of his hand. Rolling around the end zone. Touchdown. Ohio State. Ruzinski. guys on those speeches now and the hot man coming down the field. One of them got loose. Rambo's looking at him. Now he's going to outrun him. Get around That's the corner. Room. Starry Adams. Look out. Some room. And he's out of bounds to stop the clock. Up. For this snap, Joe Germain rolling out, trying to buy a little time. Steele is after him. The pass is away. The man's there. Down the With a minute and a half to go. Germain back. Protection's good. Pass is complete. D. Miller. Miller still going. Still going. Oh, he's... Miller's back out there. Jermaine looks down the middle, goes to Wiley, touchdown! <laughs> Buckeyes ought to come out of here with a pretty good third block it! Ball's in the end zone, touchdown! Ohio State! Percy King blocked the kick. in Ohio State to go somewhere else. There's one down the middle and so it is intercepted by David Macklin. Nice. Oh. Evan Thompson going big. Nastasi got it. Down one yard line. Not a touchdown. Sarah Melli. There's a touchdown. So Mike Saramelli takes it and muscles it in. Uh, stack him up and then shift him out. And it's a pass play, folks. Throwing. No. Third and nine. Thompson slips a little bit when he throws it. Shockey Fields is down there. The ball is intercepted by Ahmed Plummer. He got this one. But... <laughs> <laughs> can't go through the game without getting the riches, Jordan. Remains 
passes away. He's got Miller wide open. Uh, he was Got it again. Down to the two. Now let's see if they give it to him. Yep. And he's got it. Got away from Sean Lee. Garcia. He is a senior from Modesto, California. Blitz coming. They go after him. And the ball comes Arrington out. Arrington took it away. And Arrington, Penn State. LeVar Arrington, 12 tackles, a sack, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. For Ohio State, D. Miller, six catches, 108 yards. A Chevrolet donation made to each school's general scholarship fund for these people. A Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. And so it's final. Number one, Ohio State, 28, Penn State, Nine. We hope you enjoyed it. Now here's a dry John Sunday. Well, you get, really got to dial up your two best plays right now. It'll probably take uh, at least one to get a gain of ten. I'd find number eight once again if I could. He's been their playmaker. Northcutt. But nine touchdowns last year. His best game came against Washington. Ten catches. Third down. Jenkins fires. Completes it. They got the first down. They got it by about one foot. They got the first down. Remember, the clock stops on the movement of the chains. Once again, throwing the ball to Dennis Northcutt. Northcutt is such an exciting player to watch. And... Tends to get himself open all the time. Ortiz Jenkins, I keep working that side. Jenkins going downfield. The catch is made at the one-yard line. Brandon Nash. Again, the clock stops. You want to get up on the ball. And Nash wants to know, Coach, you want me to go for timeout? He says no. He'll probably ground the ball here. He does. It will be second down and ten. And there's a flag up top. Were the players not set? Yeah, I don't think they had enough guys on the line of scrimmage. Wow. Dick Tomey has come so far. Arizona, the only team never to have gone to a Rose Bowl, the only Pac-10 team never to have gone to a Rose Bowl. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. If Dick Tomey's team can win this football the game. 22, 22. They just said put the clock at 22 seconds left. And, and Steve, they were in the same position a year ago. Put the clock at 22, 22 seconds. Trying to get the uh, clock operator here at Husky Stadium to get two more. Oh, he did. He put two more seconds back on the clock. That's a, <laughs> that's a tough, that's a good accomplishment there if you're Arizona. But Arizona had the same situation a year ago up in Pullman against Washington State. It came down to the wire. Northeast Jenkins was unable to make the play at the end of the game. He scrambles. He is down for a loss of two on the play. He's got to take the timeout now. I go to the sideline. And I just remember Coach Tommy saying, regardless of whatever you do, you can't take a sack. I'm pretty sure Vinny Testaverde the, the, uh, the week before had, in a, in, a, in a crucial situation, basically a game-winning situation, the last play of the game, had gone low. And I think he got stopped at the one or like the ha half-yard line. And, uh, you know, OJ and I were watching that, that highlight or the ESPN had something going on with it. And uh, th there's the... You know, we said, well, if you ever get in that situation, don't you just leave your feet and flip? Or, I mean, you do whatever it is to get in the end zone. Well, I don't think Dick Tomey's comfortable right now, but he believes his football team can get into the end zone and win this game. Washington had a remarkable victory against another Arizona school to start the season, 42-38. to 38, On an amazing fourth and 17, they went 63 yards for a touchdown. Dick Tomey needs 10. In second down with 12 seconds left. What do you think Dick Tomey told OJ? What do you think he told Ortiz Jenkins? Find number eight. Find Northcutt, would you? Because he's going to be open. 
we had Ortiz Jenkins. Even though he was a year younger, you know, uh, you knew that he was going to do something. Let's see how many Huskies come dogging the cat from Arizona. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the edge of the couch looking at that, and, I'm, and my heart's pounding. I'm, I'm excited and worried at the same time, and, you know, is it going to go our way? First thing I was thinking about was Dennis, because, you know, he's the high gear, you know, wide out. You know, he's, you know, he's had a great year, um, and he was, like, doubled, or it was, you know, they were, they were rolling coverage his way. And honestly, man, I think I looked right a little bit, and I promise you, when I looked right a little bit, it's like it just opened up. Jenkins stepped up. He goes. I stood up, as did most of the people, and I start screaming no. I was screaming no, 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 don't run. And then there's three Washington purple shirts converging. And I'm saying, Lester Town, 17. Yeah, he's going to make a play. He's our best tackler. I'm running, and I see Lester, because Lester Town, he got this big old helmet. He's got a big old head, right? So he's he, a big old linebacker, too. He come, and in my mind, I'm like, there's no way I can run this guy over. I can't do it. There's no way. There's no, you, this ain't the, you know, it's not the NFL. You can't go underneath him and don't get touched. So in my mind, I'm like, man, you only got one option. Jenkins steps up. He goes. He dives. He's in. He did like I thought he would do. He came up with the miraculous. It's what he was put on earth to do. Did I just see that? Did I really just see that? Did I see somebody just jump from the five or six yard line and flip helicopter and almost land on his feet to win the game? I remember I jumped and you can see the, when I'm jumping, you see the two goal posts, right? So as I'm flipping, I remember seeing black sky because it was dark. And then once, once I land, I'm like, oh, it's over. It's Arizona with the victory. A stunning one by the Wildcats. I literally grabbed, I ran and tackled him on the sideline. I said that that was the greatest play I have ever seen any human. Allen, number one in the NCAA in punt returns, and we have a fake, and we have a penalty flag throw. But he is going to kick it away. And that is ugly with a capital U. 12, Parisa McDonald wide on the left. They keep it on the ground, and this time Hickson is going to be stacked up right about the three-yard line. Good hard-nosed defense. Bishop dumped. Backside. Third down and goal from the five, the option. Now it has to be Bishop doing it himself, but he's not going to do it. Penalty flag is thrown. And Marie Hanson, Marie's McDonald, and Lockett. Wide to the right. Bishop. Passes tipped away, intended for Darnell McDonald. And you can see he's number one on career scoring. They mark it at the 20, it'll be a 30 yarder. High snap. But the kick is good, and Gramatica goes to 7 for 10 on the year, and Kansas State strikes. Hickson goes in motion for Kansas State on first down. They keep it on the ground with Goolsby. First down in the backfield for Colorado. Machete. Play action. Pass is complete. Running room to Pete. He's got some speed. Cheverini in motion. Carter stays with him. Fumble. Kansas State has it. Darren Howard, number 49. On a they fumble again, and Bishop's going to try to take advantage of it through the air. He's going deep. Pass intended for Lockett. He's got the catch. Goolsby, did he get in? Yes, touchdown, Kansas State. That's their elephant backfield when you put a fullback and tailback and you put a defensive matchup. Third down and one, the pitch back to Hickson. He'll get the first down and pick up a few to spare. Oh, he's still on his feet. Hickson, bold. Scouching around, Machete, a little play action. Looking for Hollowell. He's got him open, and the pass is complete at the 35. And what to do? Bishop lost the handle. The ball is loose, and Colorado has it. Aaron Marshall will come up. First and 10 for the Wildcats at the 40. Bishop straight back. Looking for his tight end, and he's got him. Pass is complete. 
Third down for Bishop. He rolls. A lot of protection. The pass is going to be caught by Aaron Lockett again in traffic, but it will be short of the, the holder. Gramatica from the 29-yard line, or 24-yard line. 34-yard kick. And it is good. His second of the evening. Kansas State hangs another field goal on Colorado. And they lead 13 to nothing. Get caught up. They stay doubling up Colorado's offense. Bishop again. The big pass. It is picked off by Kelly. Any emotion. To Charrington. Up the middle. Inside the 30, down to the 27. Bishop will keep it on the option. Pitches. Picks it. Gets the handle. Look out. One man to beat, but he's knocked out of bounds. Final opportunity to come in and play tonight. Gramatica from 41 yards out, and he drills it. Automatic Gramatica. He gets excited, too. And he's the leading scorer tonight. 16 to nothing is our score. The number five ranked and undefeated Wildcats lead Colorado. Two years ago, and he's found a home. Bishop, the pitch back to Hicks, and it's loose. Colorado has it! Territory in which to operate. First and goal from the eight. They keep it on the ground. Johnson will potentially into overtime. This is only the seventh time this season that Kansas State has allowed somebody in the red zone. The opponents have scored three touchdowns and they are stopped on second and goal. Green to the left, Cheverini to the right. He's rolling, looking for Cheverini. Fires it in the end zone. The pass is incomplete. Stickers brought the play in, and he will go to the right. Cheverini to the left. Fourth and goal from the five. Looking for Stiggers. He's there. Can he get it? Touchdown, Colorado! Howard again coming. Over the middle, Cheverini. On the defense. Kansas the State this year. 2.35 to play. Machete steps up over the middle. Pass is complete to Severini again. Machete, plenty of time. Complete to the five. 2.12 to play. Machete looks for Severini. Passes knocked down. Penalty flag is thrown. There's no flag on the play. The ball was tipped. Again, two wide receivers to the right for the Buffaloes. Stiggers is the farthest out. Looking for Stiggers. Adam overthrew him. Back in man-to-man -man coverage, sometimes you hold. Looking for Green. Threw <laughs> his hands right at the goal line. And it'll be fourth down. They're kicking a field goal here. Aldridge's kick. It is good. So Jeremy Aldridge makes it a 16 to receive this kick. And he will have an opportunity. But he calls the fair catch right at the 20. Penalty flag is thrown. 12 men participating on the receiving team. It'll be a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Sufficient for the first down. The call rod going I wow. Well, it's first down and 10, and this ball game will go in the books. The fans don't like it. Colorado is out of timeouts. The valiant effort, but they will come up short. The Rick Neuheisel's first loss of the season. The defense played exceptional. The offense struggled. What a way to end it on a 12-man on the field penalty. Colorado has been in every game this year. Every game has kind of ended with something a little different happened. It happened at Baylor. They had a block punt in the fourth quarter. It happened at Oklahoma last week when Marcus Washington picked off a pass. So they have been, the University of Colorado has been, in very tight games this year. But Kansas State's most powerful offense in the NCAA held pretty much in check tonight, but they got the important numbers that they needed. ESPN.
tonight from the swamp, the LSU Tigers take on the Florida Gators, a team with payback on their minds. A year ago, Florida rolled into Baton Rouge with an air of utter invincibility. But a swarming LSU defense produced big play after big play to sack the number one team of the nation. Once the hostile crowd took over, the Gators realized they weren't getting out of Death Valley alive. This season, Steve Spurrier has delayed his toughest decision long enough. After a month of musical quarterbacks and a week where they scored just one touchdown, he decided to give the ball to sophomore Jesse Palmer with every intention that it's his team start to finish. Saturday night in the swamp. This crowd is as loud as it gets, and they are ready to explode tonight, ready for payback. As front rank LSU comes calling of sixth rank Florida. Well, it is a time to throw on first down, and he zings it complete to the 42. That's Abram Bowman. You see the blitz coming from deep in the secondary. Falk gets a block, turns it upfield, and he's open. But that right hash mark, plenty of distance, and he's good. Look at the team's performance last week defensively. Palmer puts air on the good one. There's McGrath, and he got behind him. He's gone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, McGrath. 68 yards. Take it to the 30-yard line. You see the pressure at the middle, and they dump it off. And there's our man. And Tyler intercepted, and that's Rutledge. And Tyler, I can promise you, wishes he had that back off the line. Play action. Right there's the left key right over the middle. Inside the 30 in the backfield at the same time as Johnson sings the pass. Good pass. And it is wide right. Gonna go on top. Looking for Foster. He's got And touchdown LSU. 51 yards. the lowest halftime total under Spurrier. Capel with the... He's got a lane here. Boy, does he ever on this one and motor. Out of the 45 to 50, and finally pushed out of bounds. Zings his pass complete. That's McGriff. Wide open over the middle. Touchdown. Aaron Kenny, his tight end. pressure as Johnson steps up and delivers and it's intercepted at the 10 yard line by Booker. A flag is down and Booker trying to take it the distance which he will. Let's see if the flag is LSU or Florida. against seventh-ranked Georgia. 
Over 12,000 Tennessee fans are here, and across the way, you'll hear them start cheering because the Big Orange comes racing onto the field to make their appearance, pouring onto the greensward. The special time is here. It's football time in Tennessee. But as Smokey towered over Ugga, so too would the Vols dominate the Bulldogs. Both teams sported 4-0 records. When all was said and done on this day in Sanford Stadium, only General Sherman's march to the sea would leave Georgia in greater shambles than Coach Fulmer's attack on Athens. Tennessee drew first blood thanks to some creative improvising by T. Martin. Flushed out of the pocket, Martin's 17-yard scramble put the Vols in field goal position. As Jeff Hall will attempt this, it will be a 27-yard. The kick by Hall is in the air. The kick by Jeff Hall is good. Coming off an effort at Auburn that earned him SEC Defensive Player of the Week honors, Big Sean Ellis came back for more. And he had plenty of help. Running backs are split as well. As rolling out there, Carter looking to throw, being chased from the backside. Sacked! Sacked! Al Wilson! Why would the Bulldogs be grateful for this 48-yard Hap Hines field goal? Those three points would be the only bone Tennessee tossed their way all afternoon. In the second quarter, offensive coordinator David Cutcliffe saw his attack come alive. In motion is Price to the interior. Martin back to throw, looking, waiting. Pass across the middle, complete. Pulled down by Cedric Wilson, who breaks the tackle at the 45, to the 40, to the 35, to the 30, to the 20, way to the 22-yard line. The 34-yard gain would set up Hall for his second field goal. The kick is up by Jeff Hall. Tennessee fans will tell you whether it's good or not. It is good. With under a minute remaining in the first half, Tennessee's offense continued to build momentum, Martin finding Price for a gain of 16. Two plays later, like Montana to Rice, it's Martin to Price again, and the Vols were in position to take a larger lead to the locker room. Here's the snap. It's down. The kick by Hall is in the air. It's high enough. It's long enough. Is it straight enough? It is straight enough. Good! The defense left Georgia with one last reminder on the final play of the half that nothing would come easy for the rest of the game. Derek Edmonds snared the interception, and though the Vols led by just six, it was apparent that they would impose their will on the dogs in the second half. In fact, Martin in the offense made that an immediate reality. This is Martin. He's going to run. Keeps the ball to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. He is spun out of bounds at the 4-yard line. The seven-play, 65-yard drive to open the third quarter would hit pay dirt. This is Travis Henry as the running back. This is Martin. Faking, looking. Pass into the end zone is... Give it to him. Touchdown! Cedric Wilson! What a catch! What a catch! As Cedric Wilson stretches out to pull it down one stride inside the far boundary, and Tennessee has the touchdown bill. The Tennessee lead, extended to a dozen points, was more than enough for its defensive stalwarts. The Vols destroyed Georgia's running game and held the Dogs to 59 yards rushing. The going wasn't any easier when Georgia took to the air. This will be Carter back to throw off play action. Plenty of time. Long pass downfield is chased down by Tennessee and intercepted at the 20. Pulling the ball down is Alexander back to the 25. Uh, Goodrich to the 30, to the 35, up to the 40, and he is knocked down as he gets to the 41-yard line. Meanwhile, T. Martin's surging confidence was palpable as the junior from Mobile dissected the Bulldogs with precision passing. Martin's numbers, 16 of 26 for 156 yards and a pair of TDs. Most teams who lose a Heisman-type tailback would abandon the running game, but not the Vols. Sophomore Travis Stevens, stepping in for the injured Jamal Lewis, fought his way for 107 yards, often dragging a host of tacklers along with him. The running and passing games complemented each other beautifully. Bryson. The safety valve to the left. This is Martin. They set up a screen. It comes to Price, who makes the catch. He dives. Give him six. Touchdown.
touchdown on a brilliantly executed screen to the near side. I don't know where the play came from, Bill Anderson, but it cash. Make it 22 to three, Big Orange. With the sizable advantage, the defense came after quarterback Quincy Carter with a vengeance. The freshman who had played brilliantly against LSU the previous week was punished for every deed and misdeed. The Vols harassed him at every turn, never allowing him time to set his feet as one pass after another fell harmlessly to the turf. By the end, Tennessee's defense had kept its opponents out of the end zone for nine straight quarters. Even Georgia's trickery had no prayer of being answered. Tennessee moving on defense. This will be coming to the near side. Bailey throwing a pass downfield. It is intercepted. Tennessee at the 5. Back to the 10. Back to the 15. Getting to the outside and running around a man to the 20. To the 25. Cutting inside. He has the football as he skips out of bounds. He being Augusta, Georgia's Deion Grant. A team without stars looked like an army of heroes on this October day. But it was the determination and heart shown by the volunteers that left a lasting impression. Refusing to be tackled and fighting for every extra yard showed which team wanted to win the most. And this will be Travis Stevens. Up the middle he comes, he darts, he dashes, he spins, he drives, he carries to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, down to the 35, down to the 30. Finally, he is wrestled down by a host of defenders, but he would not give up, Bill Anderson. As the Vols ran out the clock, over 80,000 Georgia fans sat silently in the wake of Tennessee's domination. For the first time since 1992, UT was 5-0 and squarely in the driver's seat in the SEC Eastern Division. They just whipped us was all Georgia coach Jim Donnan could say.